Good evening. This is the finance, Whitley Finance Committee um, meeting, April 18th. And we will be we will be unable to begin with our minutes from the last meeting because they're not ready. So we'll put that off till the next meeting. Um, am I right in that? That's right? correct. Okay, so that is correct. Instead, we will uh, move on to the second item here on our agenda to discuss and vote on the fiscal year 2024 operating budget, capital project spending, and all other financial matters related to the annual town meeting to be held on May 23rd. Okay, so do you have an agenda that you would like us to follow? Um, yeah, I, I'd like to give, I'd like to, Let's go over the budget overview table to give you an idea of where we are. Okay. Um, where we're starting from. There were some recent changes. Um, the House Ways and Means um, passed their uh, budgets with their cherry sheets, so there's some changes there that we should that we should look at. Those are incorporated into the budget overview review tool. Mm -hmm. And then I think what the plan typically does is you go down the comprehensive budget list and. You know, you use that as your guide for discussions about the various budgets, if I recall correctly, from okay, Oops. the prior year. So let me just share my screen with uh, okay, with the budget tool. All right, can we see that? You see it. So this is uh, budget projection number eight with today's date. Um, recently, the House, like I mentioned before, the House Ways and Needs had passed um, their version of the state budget. Um, the Senate will also um, adopt a version, you know, their version of the budget. Yep. Um, and then House Ways and typically that uh, is different from uh, the House budget. So they have a conference committee and then it goes to the governor for signatures mm -hmm. for disapproval. And then it comes out hopefully sometime before July 1st, but well after um, we'll have had our town meeting and voted our budget. So we're using the most current numbers. Um, with the operating budget as it currently stands, which is um, $6,031,214.68. Um, if we are projecting um, like we normally do, um, that would give us a increase in the tax rate of 41 cents or an increase in the tax levy of uh, $260,564.92. We'll probably round that up to have a uh, full figure, mm -hmm. but that's where that would, um, that's where we would project. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we would end up. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, things can happen with the state budget, so we can't guarantee that's where we would be. But that's that's where it would that's where we land right now. Um, in terms of the difference in the House Ways and Means numbers between the governor's numbers, um, we end up uh, paying thirty thousand dollars less to the state. So mm -hmm. um, it was a positive shift in that respect, and a lot of it had to do with um, uh, charter school tuition payments. So. Um, really, if we're just talking about the the operating budget at this point. Then we're really just looking at this uh, at this side, and we're looking at uh, this side over here. Yeah. Um. So also, I I wanted to mention because I. Uh, this was included in the email. This is assuming that that we that the finance committee votes to approve about two hundred twenty five thousand dollars in free cash, right? Uh, to reduce the tax levy. Last year it was uh, two hundred fifty five thousand. Yeah. Um, so um, that's where we would land right now if everything as it's provided provided in that budget um, is approved. So I just wanted to give that background as to okay. you know what recently happened. We just got the okay. those numbers. Late yesterday, so oh, I see. So the tax, okay. So we're at, um, okay. Yep, that's where we are right now. Yeah, 
that's where we would end up. Yeah. Um, so that's our increase. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And again, this. So what did I do with the operating budget that we talked about last time? Mm -hmm. Um. And we took out the frontier tennis courts mm -hmm. the capital assessment from frontier because that's going to um assuming it passes town meeting it will be paid for with cpa funds right um we took out the the one-time uh capital cost for the scanned ambulance yeah. um to be paid for with uh um hopefully a mix but well definitely seal up our monies and hopefully some existing leftover funds we have okay um from when we operated an ambulance yep. there's yep. some ambulance funds in there around seven seven thousand dollars um and um we made the, the personnel changes mm -hmm. um that were discussed mm -hmm. and that's where we landed okay um i'm i'm a little um hesitant as to whether we should get into the um the line item budget that's before us or we should delve into um, personnel questions and issues that we had from the last meeting um, that have um, spilled over into this meeting. Okay. Um, so um, I would like to deal with that first, and then we'll deal with these line items, okay? So um, the first being, and we had a, uh, actually just let me, <clears throat> we're gonna read, we will open up the treasurer collector position again. We will open up the fire chief position again. We will open up COLA again, okay? So that's what I would like to do. Um, with some recent additional information. So let's start with the treasurer collector. So we had we had um, the personnel committee recommend to us that the treasurer collector our hourly or hours in the week go from 30 to 33. Is that correct, Brian? Yeah. Okay. And, and the hourly rate would be what again? The recommended thirty-four, 34. To work. thirty-four to up from uh, twenty-nine thirty-six. Okay, so our current um or regular <clears throat> collector was making twenty-nine dollars and thirty. Yeah, I think it was seven cents an hour. Okay, so we're going up to thirty-four. So we felt comfortable with the thirty-four. Um, and then there was a discussion um, about whether or not the additional hours had the documentation that we needed in order to move forward and approve them. And for the most part, the answer was no. Uh, we didn't see the documentation. It was, it was a guess. It was, we think it's like this. And that leap of faith on the finance committee part, um, we just didn't feel comfortable with that. Now, since that time, we've had documentation. We have had uh, an overview of what the requirements are for the treasurer collector, both previous and current. And um, and it seems like those three hours um, are of value to the town. Let's put it that way. Um, additionally, we have an individual who um, was in the um, in her previous role, which was town. You know, Town clerk. Town, town clerk. So she was a town clerk. This person was a town clerk. And now is going to be the town um, collector. Therefore, able to do both jobs. Therefore, able to mentor, train, 
a new individual coming into the clerk role. So from a value perspective, um, personally, when I look at it, and I look at the value to the town, that in that office, we have two people and they do everything. So from that perspective, um, I'd like to open up to the floor that we revisit that vote and we think about this conversation in relation to the conversation that we had in the previous meeting. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to say that the uh, memorandum that we received mm -hmm. is, to me, is sufficient. And I think that is what we were basically asking for last week. So now that we have this in hand, I think we should go back and either rescind our vote or we vote again how we're going to do it and include the uh, additional three hours. I agree that they are needed. Okay. Our questions have been answered. All right. Um, I agree with that. I agree with that. Donna, you with that? And Brenda, can you hear this? Yes, I can. And yes, I am with that. Okay. Then we will revote at this time. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we vote to, to increase the hourly wage of the tax collector from 2936 to 34 and to increase the weekly hours from 30 to 33. Okay. Second. Second. Take a vote. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. And Brenda? Aye. All I okay passes. All right. That's what that's what we will do and forward. Okay. Um the next personnel decision. Um this fire chief and Dan you're gonna have to leave. What you you will have to leave the point oh, because we will be discussing. The fire chief fire position. Chief. All right. Thank you. Can he stay? Just not vote. Nope. Not He's our town president. president. Well, according, according to the town attorney, that's what he has to I'm just curious. Okay. <laughs> I love for him to stay. Believe me. Okay. Um, okay. So, well, can, can I just say that Dan had an opinion from the, the State Ethics Commission that he should not be in the room when okay. it was discussed. So, yeah. okay. Okay. Let's talk about this position a little bit. And at the last meeting, I thought we had a great presentation on it. Um, and I also made the comment that we are driven by data, we're driven by facts, and it's important that we bring all this together. So we all voted, actually we voted in the affirmative for the fire chief salary and position. Okay. I want to revisit it. We may have the same vote again, but it has to be revisited in this light. Okay. Here, it, from a factual standpoint, Waitley has a volunteer part time fire department. We've had a, the chief previous for 20 years has been paid $10,000 a year. Facts. I'm not saying why it happened or it should or should. Just facts. The personnel committee and the select board has has offered the position to an individual for 20 hours a week. The 20 hours a week was established because that was the number that was on the previous advertisement for the job 20 years previous. So, um, and during that time, 
it, we can only document that we our fire chief has had a review once in 20 years. So there is little <coughs> to no oversight in that department. There may be little to no oversight in every department. I don't know because we don't have that kind of information. So here we have, we don't know if the fire chief needs a 20 hour a week. Yes, we have a good documentation as to what they would like to do and what they think the town might need. But for 20 years, the town fire needs have been met. We also have a candidate that has a full-time position in another town. He will not be at fires during that time. Therefore, um, the accounting for the hours, when you look at all those facts, I think we have to have a discussion as to what was it that you felt you heard during the last meeting that overcame those facts. I'll stop. For me, it was the fact that it's the fire department. It's fire. It's protection. That's what swayed me at that time. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I thought of how the town has been protected from fire for 20 years, um, I don't doubt that it needs more. I don't doubt that all of those things that have been presented need to be done. But we don't have good oversight. So my recommendation would be that this be an hourly position and that the fire chief can earn, can demonstrate that 20 hours a week is needed and is performed. And we hold that for one year. And at the end of that year, with review from the select board, then they go to a salary position. And he also and he would also obviously earn hourly uh, pay during any fire calls. Um, so from a dollar perspective, if it is truly a 20 hour a week job, at the end of the day, the pay is almost the same. Um, but we don't know that. There's no documentation that says 20 hours a week. Just like there's no documentation that those three hours that the treasurer collector needed, we didn't have that. And we didn't have the documentation that, that there is a specific need is 20 hours a week mandated by the town. Could it be more? Absolutely. But I think that um, personally and looking out at the needs of the town to jump from $10,000 a year to $30,000 a year for a job that we cannot quantify is a difficult jump for me. Personal. So I would, Brenda, you're on the line. You're in Zoom. Jim's here. Donna's here. I'd be interested. So I really need to know how you feel about it. Um, Paul, uh, a couple of thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I think you raised some uh, valid questions. I. Um, and none of which I think have to do with either the way the fire department has been man, has been run or will be run because mm -hmm. GP has been appointed. He's, he's not just a candidate, he's been appointed by the select board. I think um, one of the challenges is that some of the, really the gist of your questions get at the recruitment process 
and they are questions that might have been asked before the before the job was advertised, but it was advertised at 20 hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, and an appointment was been had was made for that level of work. Um, and in that sense, actually, not to, I mean, I'm very happy that we just voted the increase in the treasurer collector with a bit of extra explanation. In that case, they are not exactly the same. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, not exactly the same. Not exactly. Same. Okay. Yeah. Um, so those, those are sort of procedural mm -hmm. thoughts that I have. I have um, absolutely no expertise or way of judging what is necessary for the town. Mm -hmm. okay. I have felt protected, and I also found JP's presentation compelling. <laughs> so it you know, I'm not saying I that think that those things can absolutely. both be true. Absolutely. Jim, what do you think? Yes, I have a problem with asking the fire chief to document hours to justify the future salary or the future number of hours without oversight. There's got to be oversight mm -hmm. or documentation is just a wasted effort in my opinion. Right. So how can we provide sufficient oversight to make sure that documentation of the hours worked and the the litany of things on that list that he provided are being completed mm -hmm. and without that oversight and who's going to provide that oversight. I, I just don't see how that's. Well, the oversight is the responsibility of the select board. Is the fire chief reports to the select board. Police chief reports to the select board. The DPW chief reports to the select board. It's the select board's responsibility for oversight in all of those departments. Um, um, unfortunately, we don't have a job description for, for the select board, but you know maybe that could come too downstream. Um, so, well, I have no answer for that. Um, how do we provide oversight? Um, I don't know, Brian. How do we? How does? How does this town, outside of the um, honesty of individuals, to say that I did X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z? Um, how, do, how does that occur? It's, so my understanding of, of what the so where I was was go, was going to require in terms of the the fire the fire chief position was that they were going to require the submission weekly of or biweekly of hours worked. Um, to my knowledge, that that at least as long as I've been here, that was never done with the it was a stipend arrangement. There was equal payments of the whatever the amount was, and then um, you know there was there was no. Um, there was no you know, submission of timesheet for those stipend hours. Right. Um, I, that's that's going to change. My understanding is that's going to change. Mm -hmm. um, so the hours will be documented. Um, in terms of, it's hard for me to, I, I can't speak on behalf of the select board. Um, you know, they, the, the select board has a department liaison for each department. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a recommendation will be that the, that the liaison have, you know, Frequent check-ins and things like that um, with, with the fire chief. Um, it's um, fire chief is a strong chief too, right? I believe yes. it is. Um, fire both, chiefs what? Both both the fire chief and police chief and Whaley are what are considered strong chiefs. So there's two provisions of mass general law. Okay. And when when there's a strong chief, they have um, uh, more control over the operation of the department, mm -hmm. and um, the select board has less control over the operation of the department. In that arrangement, mm -hmm. um, for instance, I'll just use Jim for an example. Jim can, you know, Jim can present regulations, stop regulations, and then he can present them to the select board. And, and Mass General Law says the the board has thirty days, thirty days, yeah. 30 days to review them. I don't even think they can deny them. Yeah. Um, they, they don't have to vote on. So um, the arrangement is a little bit different. Um, if you 
were to compare to like a, a typical, well, a different department, let's say the highway department, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so there's different levels of, of control and oversight that the select board have over those two departments. Um, but but definitely, I think, you know, tracking hours and if, if you know, a recommendation to the select board would be that there be, you know, frequent check-ins with the, with the new fire chief. How do you feel about that? Well, it needs to be more than tracking hours. It needs to be tracking what is accomplished. Mm -hmm. against that list of duties right that tracking hours means nothing to me I mean, we, mm -hmm. we we really have to track what's being accomplished and is is there time is there manpower to be able to track that and yeah exactly i just don't know yeah yeah and um and we have JP's um, presentation of everything that he feels needs to be done um, in the town. Um, so the question would be, um, training, Grant writing. So we have the select. We we have the select. Can I ask a question of the select board? So the select board can cannot answer questions that because it's not a posted select board meeting that they can't make a decision, so to speak. They cannot make a decision. Right. Okay. Can they answer a question? Um, they could answer questions on their own individual behalf. Exactly. But okay. we're, we just need to be careful that. Okay. All right. Um, Juliana, Julie. Do they, uh, Ju Julie? Yes. Yes, Julie. Julie. Okay. Julie. Um, um, we are once again um, looking at the fire chief position. And specifically, oversight of the position in relation to, well, the reporting body that that individual has, which is the select board. And we have, um, and there's a list of short-term goals here that we were provided. And this comes, this all comes down to a value proposition for the town. Um, the town had fire chief for 20 years, we're paying ten thousand dollars and we're going from ten to thirty thousand dollars based on a 20 hour work week with no documentation as to whether or not that is real or not. So um as a as a resident taxpayer in the town of Whateley um and you've heard it all um, as a resident ta ta <clears throat> as a resident taxpayer, do you feel comfortable that there could be oversight and um, uh, on the ability of the town to um, to see that these things are accomplished? Was, was that big enough? <laughs> I, will, I will try to answer and Brian, you stop me if I get into dicey territory. Um, my opinion would be that it would be beneficial not only to the town and the select board, but to the fire chief himself if he did some kind of project tracking. Um, so not only hours, but th these are the things that I want to accomplish in this amount of time. And this is how far I've gotten with them. I think that that would be beneficial for him and in his position, as well as for the select board as um, 
you know, people working with him. That's my opinion. Okay. Well, that's, um, I agree. I agree. Donna? I, I, I think it's beneficial for everyone. I was thinking that when I worked for pay and brought people onto a staff, our practice was to set 30, 60, 90, and six month targets. And, and then things would move. <laughs> right. Know? But right. it was helpful to mm -hmm. set the targets mm -hmm. and go back and talk about why that wasn't the right plan mm -hmm. if it wasn't the right plan. When I hired Very people, yeah. when, when in a similar situation, when I hired people, it was a six month probation. probation. And it, during that time, you were the new hire was evaluated on a regular basis and to make sure that they were up to speed and doing what needed to be done. Um, that doesn't occur um, in the gov government system, to my knowledge. But um, anyway, um, so I'll put it out, I'll put this out. Do you still feel comfortable with your vote from last week? I do. Do you still feel comfortable with, with your vote from last week? I do with additional oversight. Okay. Brenda, you still feel comfortable with your vote from last week? Yes. Okay. And I do as well. So um, the um, the message from the Finance Committee, I think, is that um, there needs to be oversight um, in regards to this new individual taking up this position. Okay, thank you very much. Right. Um, could you ask the answer? Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next, um, the next piece of last week's meeting that I'd like to, um, take a look at, again, is the COLA. Um, so a personnel committee recommended 7.1, and we voted on 5.5. Um, um, the personnel committee uses the CPI index and the social security increase to come to a decision. Um, for coal. When it comes to salary increases, the personnel committee uses the um, pay structures in the towns directly adjacent to us. Okay. But they do not use the COLAs in the towns adjacent to us. Um, so, when you look at C CPI, the CPI index is comprised, 93% of the data that goes into the CPI is from urban areas. It's essentially an urban area number. <clears throat> Social security increase, last year was 8.7%. It's the highest since 1981. And, um, and on top of that, Medicare comes out of that. So you get hit on Medicare. Yeah, you, yeah, you get the 8.7 as social security, but you also have the Medicare cost taken from that. So the federal for 2024 will be 5.2%. Okay. Say it again. The federal, say it again, please. Federal COLA for 2024, Biden has just signed on. There's going to be 5.2%. Okay. Okay. And we approve 5.5. Um, 
Do you feel comfortable with your vote? Um, I do. I do. I, uh, I want to say something about Social Security, though, as a measure. Yeah. And I understand that it has been the practice of these three groups, mm -hmm. finance, personnel, and uh, select board working more or less together for years to consider that. Uh, I, I think that Social Security increase is not a relevant factor. It affects fewer than 15% of American residents. It is national. It is calculated once a year, whereas the CPI indices are all calculated every month, so you can get a pressure. I mean, it's still, you're still gonna make the decision once a year, but um, I, uh, I don't mind using, I, I mean, I liked Dan's idea of using the regional CPI indicator and, um, and I, uh, I hear you that 5.2% is in the Biden administration's proposal, but given that that hasn't even begun to be negotiated because there's been no counter proposal right. from the others. You know, right. We don't know what that that's what he is. wants, though. It's speculative, really. Yeah. It certainly won't be any higher than 5.2%. No. So I'm now agreeing that you firm. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, comments? Yeah, in regards to the backdrop of what you're saying about Social Security, uh, the other reason I don't think we should be using it as heavily is because a person receiving Social Security never gets a raise. Mm -hmm. They just get a COLA. Right. <clears throat> We're talking about giving people COLAs that are also getting raises. Correct. And the two of those should be combined and said this is your pay increase. Mm -hmm. Whereas somebody caught in Social Security said, oh, I got a big cold this year. Yeah, but I also did not get any other pay increase. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, I agree. That's my point. That's 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 what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Jim? I don't see any reason to repeat what was just said. I agree with what was just said. And I think that the... 0.3% is insignificant uh, to, to change my vote. Okay. Then I'm then um, okay. Then we're good. Yes? I'm Brenda. Brenda? Sorry, I didn't see <laughs> the hand. Go ahead. Hey, hi, it's Brenda. Um, I'm a penny pincher. Ask any one of my three sisters, they'll tell you I'm a penny pincher, but I am, I wish we could do more, but I am very happy with my 5.5% vote. Okay. All right. So it stands as is. Okay. Um, it was, um, I just felt that the last meeting, um, some things were overlooked possibly so all right so that's that's that let's get to the let's get to the government uh the um general government and we'll go down we'll go down the list here um okay okay we're going to take these um, by department. If we have an issue with any of the increases, let's say so. Okay, general government. General government. That's going to change, right? So, yeah, the screening that that's the current number with the amendment to the treasury corrective budget. That will change. Okay. The, the, the new figure would be 86. 459. That's the total. But then the operating budget will be 76,948.51 because a percentage of the treasury collector salary is paid by the enterprise fund. Okay. Okay. So for 2024 in the general government, on this sheet, we got 56926351. What will be the new number that we will vote on? Um, 573.984. Oh seven 
Oh seven. Yeah. Okay. He'll grace me the rounding when the final budget goes together. Okay. That would be appreciated. Okay. Um, for general government, we have an operating budget five hundred seventy three thousand nine hundred eighty four dollars and seven cents. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Um, make the motion. That would be <laughs> vote. Do you want discussion before the motion or after the motion? Okay, let's do let's do the I mean, discussion. I thought I thought I had made some discussion time, but it didn't. Okay, okay. Let's not vote right. Let's. Okay, I'm going to open open it up to discussion. I think this is a conversation that. Uh, what's going on that before we started the meeting? I think, given that Scott Jackson is not has not set a date for his departure, that we, I think, this increase for the Conservation Commission includes the ten thousand dollars he had suggested we might have to pay to hire a professional were he to disappear. How did he disappear? Were he to step down? That would be an opportunity for shaving the budget. In, in that I'm guessing that if Scott were unable to serve in December, let's say the town would somehow come up with the money to mm -hmm. do what we're required to do legally for the conservation okay. commission. So your recommendation would be to from a dollar. My, my re recommendation, if it's 10 that is in there, would be to remove it. Take 10 it's out. Just a placeholder. Is that not talked about it so many yeah. weeks ago true. that is true right the ten thousand is just the placeholder mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and if we and he, and we don't have any placeholders for anything else i think i don't believe so we have um, right you know we have various reserves mm -hmm. i just mentioned something go ahead um so if if, if we keep the ten thousand in, in the budget if we're going to tax to generate the ten thousand dollars right um through the tax levy so uh one option would either be to not include it or put it recommend an article to put in for to set aside ten thousand dollars of free cash um until that time that um you know that that money's needed um you know i think i think the concern here is that if we put in ten thousand dollars in the budget and then it doesn't get used it flips to free cash and then next year we you know, taxing another ten thousand dollars, and how we can use it. So it's just a matter of whether we want to set it aside now, and then when that comes up, then we can use it. We don't have to necessarily generate ten thousand dollars point taxes this fiscal year to cover those costs. But it will stay in this year's budget. Well, so what's what what Don is recommending is that we would take it out of this year's operating budget, right? But we could. For instance, use the existing funds, let's say free cash, ten thousand dollars of free cash, put in a separate article, set that money aside, and then that money just rolls over fiscal year to fiscal year. We don't have to raise ten thousand dollars okay. every fiscal year. Okay. And then once once this position or if this position or when this position becomes a reality, mm -hmm. um, then it will you know, slide into the operating budget. But okay. um, already. Any other thoughts about the general government? Harry, that'd be a good idea to roll that out. <clears throat> Keep it separate. Okay. As a yeah, separate line item. Okay. Um, no other questions. Okay. So the new number will be. Um, so we're taking 10 grand out of there. What's our new number? 2,427. Oh, your total number. If we take the ten grand, if we take the ten thousand dollars from the conservation commission, that reduces our um, five six three, right? Uh, oh, the total would be uh, five six three nine eight four zero seven. Okay, um, general government. 
Would anyone like to make a motion for general government? I move that we recommend 563-98407 for general government 2024 budget. Second. Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call. For, uh, do we need a roll call on this? Yeah. Okay, so we do. Okay. Brenda? Aye. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. And Paul? Aye. Okay, good. All right. All right, let's go next to cultural recreation services. So for 2024, the request is $178,331 with a $21,036 increase. Comments, thoughts? I move that we recommend $178,331 for culture, recreation, services, <clears throat> or budget. Second. Second. Okay, we'll take a roll call. Brenda? Aye. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. I'm with, and I also am on board there. Okay, let's go to public health. Public health for 2024, they're asking for $102,343 for an increase of $7,526, 7.94% increase. Comments, issues, are we good? Okay, gonna have a motion. I make a motion. We uh, vote for one hundred and two thousand three hundred thirty-four dollars, three hundred and forty-three dollars public health. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Public health. Brenda. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Donna? Aye. Paul? Yes. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, we're going on to public safety now. Public safety is requesting in 24, $491,214 for a total increase of 62918 a 14.69% increase. Please take a look at those numbers. Any issues, any thoughts, comments? Do we have a motion? Uh, I move uh, $491,214. Public safety. Second. Okay. Second. All those in favor for public safety? Vote on that. Brenda. Aye. Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. Okay. Public Works. Public Works is requesting. $453,739 for a $23,974 increase or 5.58% for 24. Looking down the list, any comments? Any recommended changes? No. Could I have a motion? I make a motion. We accept public works as read for or $453,739. Second. Second. Okay. 
We'll go through the roll call again. This is for Public Works. Brenda? Aye. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Yes. Okay. All right, next is insurance and benefits. Insurance and benefits is $851,559.17 for, for an increase of $45,828.17. It's kind of a moot point. There is very little that we can do. Um, here, okay. So, do we have a can I have a motion? I move that we recommend $851,559.17 for insurance and benefits for the 2024 budget. Okay, seconded. All right, okay. We'll vote on insurance and benefits. Brenda, aye. Okay. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Aye. Okay. okay. Next, we have the secret unclassified. Okay. Um, that would be Reserve Fund, Franklin Regional Council of Governments, Physicals and Tests, Town Vehicles, Fuel, Educational Incentives. Unclassified is seventy-two thousand. Let me make sure it's seventy-two thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars for seven hundred thirty-five dollar decrease and a decrease of one percent. I move that we accept and recommend seventy-two thousand five twenty-five even for the category unclassified for the 2024 budget. Second. Second, okay. This is the unclassified budget. Brenda. Aye. Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. Okay. Next, we will have <laughs> education. Okay. So this is the education budget for 2024 total for the town of Waverly. That number is 3,262,580 dollars for an increase of 94,969 dollars for a 3% increase. Comments, thoughts, issues with the educational budget. Can I mention, mention, just mention one thing? Yeah. So the, the Waitley Elementary School budget is $20,000 less than what, what was recommended by the school committee because um, we are, well, the select board still needs to vote, but um, they've tentatively agreed to pay the $20,000 separation costs out of the CLFRF monies. Okay. So that's there's twenty thousand dollars less as to what shows here. Um I reached out to Shelly today, Shelly created today. Mm -hmm. Um and if this is the number we approve and the twenty thousand dollars is going to be paid for with the CLFRF money, then the school committee will revote this amount. Okay. Before the annual town meeting. Okay, that doesn't change our number here tonight. Correct. This okay. is with the twenty thousand removed. That's that's right. Yep. Okay. Um just to let people know at home, uh, Frontier Regional um, has a negative increase, $102,500, uh, which helps us out a great deal. And we thank them for uh, for using monies that they had to uh, offset some of this. Okay. All right. So do I have a motion? Can I get a motion? I'll move that we accept and recommend $3,262,580 for the category of education for fiscal 2024. Seconded. Second. Thank you. 
Okay, we will take a vote. Brenda. Aye. Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. Okay. Alrighty. So next we were at um, debt service. 2024 uh, debt service. Um, essentially, temporary loan increase, excavate a lease purchase agreement, wood chip a lease purchase agreement in the operating budget. The debt service is $49,660, which is even. Okay. Comments, questions? Okay. Do we have a motion? I make a motion debt services that we pay forty nine six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Very good. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Debt service. Okay. We'll take a vote. Brenda. Aye. Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. Okay. Um. Do we have to vote on the total, Brian? Um, we, we voted on each. Do we have to vote on that six? Uh, not necessarily, but that's what it should equal. Okay. So. Um, it should have been. It, oh, I'm sorry. What, what's on my screen should have? What, what's that? Uh, 60, 6025-935-24. Could you give me that again? Yep. Uh, Six million. Yep. Twenty-five. Yep. Um, Nine thirty-five. Twenty-four cents. Six million. Twenty-five okay. thousand nine thirty-five. Okay. Okay. So. And then this is the enterprise. Right. Right. The enterprise. That's what that does. So that we close out the town, and we'll just have the um, all of these. I think we should take a vote on the total. Okay. okay. Um, so for 2024, total town operating budget is six million twenty-five thousand nine hundred thirty-five dollars and twenty-four cents. Do I have a motion? I move that we accept and recommend a total operating budget of six million. $25,935.24 for fiscal 2024 operating budgets. Do we have a second? I second. Okay. okay, we have the enterprise fund. And the enterprise fund, please uh, roll, call. Uh, roll call. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just, I'm a little, a little, sorry. My apologies. We're going to vote on total town operating budget. Brenda? Aye. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Aye. Okay. All righty. Um, last but not least, you have the Enterprise Fund Water Department. The 2024 operating budget, $262,606. And thirty-two cents for a dip for a for the difference of one hundred minus one hundred forty-four thousand four hundred sixteen dollars and sixty-eight cents, or negative thirty-five point four eight percent. So <clears throat> I'll explain that. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, so if if you recall the in in prior years operating budgets, the water department had to, including their expenses, the payment of uh, the borrowing that they had in the form of $200,000. So um, this 143,833 is actually an increase of, I guess it's not, but whatever 200,000, roughly whatever 200,000 minus the 143,833. So it's actually an increase of around Fifty-six thousand um, dollars. I'm very confused now. 
This, so if you look at if you look at the operating budget for 2023, yeah, 407, 023, right, 200,000 of that <laughs> is really it was a payment for the uh, town center pump house loan. Okay. So that so the remaining 207 was actually the operating expenses that they have for that year. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And then that loan, you know, that payment is taken out. And that payment's out. So we no longer, they no longer, we, they no longer have that payment. Okay. Very good. Do we have a motion? If any thoughts on this, any comments, any? Okay. <clears throat> Do we have a motion? I make a motion that we recommend the Enterprise Fund Water Department for $262,606.32. Oh, I'm sorry, there's that that will have changed. So so the, the number is uh, 263,189 dollars and 76 cents. So 263,189.76, because they pay a share of the treasure collector increase. So that increased their overhead cost to 55,234.76. All right, so my motion should be for the Enterprise Fund Water Department to be 263,000. One hundred eighty-nine and seventy-six cents. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. Let's, this is for the enterprise fund. We'll take the vote. Brenda. Aye. Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. Okay. You good? Okay. Yeah. Good. So let me update this. You want to what? I'm going to update this budget overview tool so that way we can look at our plan. Give me one So that dropped the two more cents, so the tax projected tax rate by two cents. So what's the tax rate now? Uh, fourteen fifty nine. So it'd be an increase of thirty nine cents. And again, this assumes that. Some of the, you know, this assumes that, and it's a goal we'll have to take mm -hmm. when we review the income coming warranty if we want to put 225 and free cash towards. Right. Um, that's probably a, a logical discussion next if you want to. 
go there. A free cash discussion. Sort of. Yeah, capital and free cash. Okay, let's 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 just do the capital. Um, what we have. Really, Um, does everybody have the capital requests in front of them? Yes. Does this? Um, so as it stands right now, Brian, um, the eighty-five thousand dollars for the F one hundred and fifty has been taken out. Uh, that's showing. Uh, yeah, being paid for with free cash. Okay. The, you're talking about the F550. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I actually, um, the pickup. Oh, the pickup. Yeah, the pickup. Um, my under, yeah, my understanding is that I think it's the preference of the select board that, um, that they wait till after there's a, uh, after the, the grant. So the, there's a grant, uh, the town recently got a grant to, to develop a plan to electrify the fleet. Um, so I think the preference of the select board is to wait till that plan comes out, um, okay. and then to move forward with that. Okay. Um, if that's not the case, then I will come back to the finance committee. And Did they, are they planning on electrifying the dump truck too? I don't know that they've taken a vote, um, but I don't, my understanding is that the heavy duty trucks are not there yet in terms of electric just so. inquire so um okay all right so um <clears throat> we are voting on a new dump truck in plow f550 for one hundred thousand dollars i'm gonna open it up onto the floor for Questions. I know we've spoken about this. I know Keith came in and we we had a discussion on it. Um, but this is the voting part of it. And um open it up. Any questions? Any issues? No. We're happy. Okay. Um gosh, it's a lot of money, but they're a lot of money. You know, what are you gonna do? You gotta have a dump truck, you gotta have a plow, you gotta you, you know, I, I think our roads, generally speaking, are second to none. Um in you know, com comparatively to the towns <clears throat> around us. So okay, so um we'll do a roll call vote for the dump truck for a hundred thousand dollars. Do I have a motion? I move that we recommend spending about hundred thousand dollars to purchase a new dump truck and plow at five fifty for the highway department. Okay. I like it. Okay, the second. Then we will take a uh, a roll call vote. Brenda. Still there? Brenda. Did did she leave? Joyce just sent a message said that the audio might be gone. Can, can anybody in Zoom hear us? Is the Zoom still on? Oh, Joyce just says she can hear. Okay. I can hear you. Who's who's that? This is Julie. I can hear you. Julie, okay. <laughs> All right. So um Donna. Hi. Dan. Hi. Jim. Hi. Paul. All right. That's four. That is a quorum that Bailey. It barely makes it. Brenda is there. Brenda? She, she's muted. She, okay, she left the room. Okay, fine. It looks, yeah. I don't know. Her screen looks frozen. It, look, does, it does look a little frozen. Okay. Okay. Um, the next piece on here would be the uh, new tasers, body cameras, and software for $55,000. Any questions, thoughts? I know Chief Savine has at length told us the need for these. So, okay, do I have a motion? I move that we recommend 
spend 55,000 for new tasers, body cameras, and software. Okay. We will Not take second. second. Okay. Um, we will take a vote. And Brenda, be there. No. Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. <clears throat> okay. Um, do we need anything else voted on here, Brian? So up for discussion, I think, um, would be um, whether um, the committee wants to recommend setting aside the $10,000 of free cash for a shared conservation agent okay. that we removed from the budget. Okay. All right, we uh, we had a discussion. You saw it happen. Um, so we have to we have to vote on that ten thousand um, dollars. Donna, would you like to make a motion? I would. I'm afraid I have a question. Yeah. Is, is there any risk that if um, by some miracle someone comes into town with Scott Jackson's experience and abilities and is willing to step into his shoes that we would not need to spend the money would we be able to get it back it's set aside for a specific amount is this I guess my is this going in a designated account or is it just going into free cash for with an um, understanding it would go into a designated account it would just take the town meeting vote to, to repurpose okay, the funds for whatever purpose could, okay Yep. Uh, in, in case, uh, I'm not sure. I move that we allocate ten thousand dollars to a designated free cash account for future possible shared conservation, shared conservation agent. Okay. <laughs> a second. Second. Okay. Let's take a vote. Donna. Hi. Dan. Hi. Jim. Hi. Paul. Hi. Okay. Um, so the next, the next two here um, on the sheet here were recommendations about transferring money from free cash to stabilization accounts. Yes, she's really. I was just suggesting twenty thousand to vehicle and twenty thousand to building stabilization. It could really be any amount. Yeah. Um, if you look in the upper right ish corner here, that's what we would have remaining mm -hmm. of unspent free cash. Yeah. We try to keep it between one fifty and two hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, so if these could really be any amounts or none at all, it would just okay. stay in free cash. Okay. Um, we can vote on the total line to revenue to reduce tax rate, right? That would be a, a separate vote. Well, that would be the 225 that goes directly against the tax levy. Okay. Oh, oh, I see right under it. Okay. All right, then we'll, we will uh, we'll take them individually. Okay. Um, we have a motion to transfer twenty thousand dollars to vehicle stabilization. We have a motion to do that. I so move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Go down the list. Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. Okay. Next one. So. Make a motion to transfer to building stabilization $20,000 as noted here. Do I have a motion? I mean, do I have a second? I made the motion. Second. Okay, we will go down, we will vote once again for the $20,000 in building stabilization. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. Paul? Aye. Is Brenda back? No. Okay. All righty. Last on this list. Revenue to reduce tax rate. Two hundred twenty-five thousand um, dollars is the number. Do I have a motion? Okay. I move that we recommend. 225 to reduce the tax rate. Do I have a second? Second. Very good. We shall vote. Okay. On the 225 to reduce the tax rate. Donna. Aye. Dan. Aye. Jim. Aye. Paul. Aye. Okay. 
All right. We're there. Brian? Yeah. Are we there? Are we close? For well, this, I think. Okay. I would I would recommend that we run through the annual town meeting warrant. Um, because there are some articles in there that the finance committee typically provides a recommendation on, right? Um, just so that we capture everything. Okay. And I'll pull it up on this. And to save you all the motions, I would recommend that you just vote at the end, maybe. Yeah. Unless you want to make 30 something motions. No, it's good. I think we'll, motions. we'll do a maxi motion. Okay. Put them all together. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's see the first one that so this is a draft it's a, just because it says recommended by it doesn't really mean recommended by right right uh the first one for the that we typically have for the finance committee is article six um this is to establish spending limits for the town revolving funds this is the same as the prior year mm -hmm. um when we just keep going if people have questions just yeah stopping any questions on this Article six. Okay. Article seven, these the salaries and compensation of elected officers of the town. Um, this is this same as last year adjusted by the full amount. Mm -hmm. Article eight. Any questions, comments? Okay. Article eight is a water department enterprise enter, enterprise fund budget that you already um that we just voted on voted on article nine is the fiscal year 24 operating budget that you voted on mm -hmm. um proposed financial transfers these you have voted on these the 225 mm -hmm. reduced free cash twenty thousand dollars to vehicle right. stabilization and then twenty thousand dollars to town building stabilization fund um article 13 is a hundred thousand for the uh, heavy duty pickup truck with plow that you voted on. Mm -hmm. 50, article 14 is a 55,000 for the police equipment. Um, so these, um, the next three articles here are, are uh, we have leftover funds from when the town operated an ambulance service. Yep. Um, and the, this is approximately 7,000 and some change. Um, what's being recommended here is that these be spent. Um, to pay for the the scams capital costs for mm -hmm. the ambulance, and then the remainder of it be paid for with the sale of RF money. Sure. Um, Article eighteen uh, frontier is um, proposing to um, create a capital stabilization fund um, yeah. for the frontier regional school district. Mm -hmm. It's something that they're allowed to um, create. Yep. Um, it's likely that they will probably move some of their excess and deficiency money over, you know, as they get it into paying for future capital costs. I think that's small. Um, these are Community Act, Community Preservation Act appropriations. Um, so there's the typical uh, moving of money into the different various uh, categories that the law requires. Mm -hmm. Um the first, so the first project one is is um, Article Twenty. That is the um, the, the frontier tennis courts. The cost right. of, that's the capital assessment mm -hmm. that we removed out of the budget, but it's being paid for through CPA funds okay. here. That's good. Um, Article Twenty One is eight thousand um, dollars for preservation of the steps at the library, and Article Twenty Two is. Um, this is to appropriate the sum of $27,350 um, for the restoration of one of uh, three masonry silos at Quan Quan Farm, um, subject to a 20 year grant agreement requiring compatibility um, with the historic preservation standards. 
similar to the agreement that was entered into with the congregational church. Um, in the in the past, there's been discussions about whether finance committee wants to vote on these or not. Um, we should just see. What, well, what you, want you know, to do. That's just the last, the just last roll year. back a little bit to that to the to the quant quant farm thing here. Yeah. The um, community preservation fund does not require finance committee. If I'm that is correct. That is correct. Okay. Um, but yet, when it came to the windows in the church, you asked us to recommend it. I think I think I bring it before the finance committee. Mm -hmm. I don't think the CPC asked. The what? The what? I don't think the community preservation committee asked, requested finance committee. But we did have a conversation. Yeah. And would all, in this and, and we did vote on in this yeah. process. Yeah, I, I would. I would always bring these. I would always bring this to the attention of the finance committee. Okay. Um. Well. Well, we don't have to vote on it, so it would end up being just a personal. Um, view of this decision, and um, I personally would not recommend it because it's a private, privately owned home, and we're taking public monies. And I'm, I can't believe that that fund is going to try to do this on town floor. Um, that's, it's going to be very interesting. Um, any other comments on this from finance committee? I have the same question in my mind. Yeah, I mean. May I, I, Paul, may I, may I address it? I, yes, I, I absolutely. absolutely. Have, since I have the bad luck to have three hats on in this yep. case. Yep. Um, uh, I mean, it is. We had, of course, the same question when the church application came through that is also private. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in some ways it's too bad that that came up for a special town meeting because it limited the, the town conversation. Um, the legislation uh, absolutely uh, allows grants to private entities, even to private individuals. Some towns are giving grants to people to restore their homes mm -hmm. or, or think of buildings yep. that they own. Um, I mean, this is a tough one because this is only the second, actually it's the third application from a private, from a private entity, a, a mm -hmm. member of the uh, town resident asked for money to restore his tobacco barn uh, before I was on the community preservation committee. And at that point, the decision was that it was not such a distinctive tobacco barn that, we sh that they should open that door, really, go down that yeah. road. Um, so we did, the Historical Commission set uh, established a whole new set of criteria, tougher criteria for private entities. Um, and I will simply say that the reason that the Quan Quan uh, application passed is that it was to be, had to be truly distinctive. And that is one of, two or maybe three farms in the state that have those ceramic tiles on yep. the side. Um, we talked about it back, back and forth. Um, the farm spent $80,000 of its money to restore the first two last year, and this amount would be half of what it now will cost them to finish the job. Uh, I'm not arguing against your basic point. I'm just giving you more information sure. than you already sure. have. Um, and we decided, um, actually this was recommended by the Historical Commission, but the CPC agreed, it, agreed that there was no point in putting um, a right of first refusal on, as we did with the church agreement, because the ads that the town would want to buy, you know, a silo at Fun Point Farm seemed, you know, yeah. but we would again, um, uh, and it was this 20 year agreement, no matter who owned it, that said if you if you don't maintain it, then you have to pay somebody, whoever owns it, then will have to pay the whole grant back. Now I know that doesn't I know that doesn't um, address your your core 
<laughs> the checks sure. in the mail. But I would like you guys, yeah. I'd just like you to say that we actually have been talking about this since December in several. Well, I, you know, meetings. now that I think. And it is interesting, you know, we may get 20 proposals next year. I don't know. Yeah. You know? Well, I think now you'll get more. Yeah. Because right. once the, once the, um, right. once it's known that, that you're putting the bill for private um, right. restoration. Um, but I would say, generally speaking, that um, I think we I just let, let, let me back up. I, I think we owe it to the people of town to um, recommend or not that article so that it's on there as to what the finance committee thinks about that. Brian, what happened to it? It went away. Oh. The uh, Okay, I'd love to take a vote on this. Brenda? Still not happy. Uh, may I actually say one other thing? Yep. Um, one of the criteria is public good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand that uh, the question of whether one thinks historic preservation of unusual buildings is for the public good, that's that's it. That's a personal judgment call. Mm -hmm. um, the um, Quantifon application made a particularly good case for the public good it serves by listing all the charities, it, both in Waitley and out of Waitley, that it you know provides support and that it uh, allows uh, fundraising events without charging what it charges for its other business, that sort of thing. I, I'm not, again, it's not my proposal, but I they took that quite seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, do I have a motion to recommend Article 22? Um, that the Community Preservation Fund used the $27,350 um, for restoration at Quang Quang Farm. Um, take that one. Okay. The motion has been made. Do I have a second? Can, can I make a comment? Sure. I don't see how we cannot recommend this this money be spent since we set a precedent with the church windows. I don't see how this is that much different than the restoration of the church windows. It's I see that. The only difference is that with the church, if they default, the town gets right of first refusal to the property. Yeah, that's true. So, um, um, we have a question. We yes. have this comment. Yes. Thank you, Trader, uh, 315 on Plain Road. I'm just wondering, I'm a concern, like, as you just said, Donna, maybe next year we'll get 20 applicants. I mean, when do we stop? Well, or, well most, um, most town committees that manage the grant process for CPA funds yeah. uh, turn down applications routinely. We, um, I've only been on the committee since 2015. <laughs> so, but I believe that we have been in the unusually fortunate situation of only turning proposals down if they're really clearly not eligible, because the state defines eligibility for the different categories quite clearly, or they're just terrible. So, you know, they're, to be, you know, they're, they're not finished. They clearly require certain kinds of reviews that haven't happened legally. They can't, they can't get it done at the time. 
Um, you know, most funding sources have to say yes or no. You know, this is. Um, I guess my concern as a taxpayer is that I can't go to farm a farm whenever I want to see these silos, and I can't. I'd get arrested if I went there without permission, and that that's one of my concerns. That's true. That. That's true. Well, it's private property, though, right? But yeah, yeah. but they welcome the public, and they have a shop, and you can see the you can see the silos from the road. I mean, yeah, you certainly can. I mean, again, I'm not. I, yeah. I understand the question you're asking, but uh, yeah, they're, they're not. Um, there isn't hard wire. <laughs> yeah, you know, just to sort of go along with what Amy said, um, I have a, I have a difficult time. It's not a ton of money, okay, but we have a library that. With windows that need to be restored, replaced, and they these guys have to jump through hoops and backwards to get community preservation funds to make this a reality. Um, I mean, With who had to jump through hoops? The library trustees. Well, what the library trustees had to do was read the guidelines and submit a complete application and, and the historical commission helped them to do that in great detail, just as we did two years ago when the application they submitted for the handicapped accessibility work was incomplete. I mean, that's the, the, uh, so um, they had to jump through no more hoops than one point, which submitted, you know, I'm not the pages at the point, but you know, did a lot of work too. Yep. So I, um, and on the windows issue, as you remember, when I heard Bob Smith say restoring the windows, I confused the issue by being hopeful that they would be CPA eligible, but they're not restoring it. They're, they're reglazing windows and there's a very clear distinction between restoration and repair. And with a 180 page um, set of guidelines, and you know, would that it would be different. Um, okay. No, I, I I think the library is at the age where we ought to be looking at the entire building and mapping out which parts of the work that will have to be done would be eligible. But you see how that, and and it's a good explanation. Understood. But you can see how this stings. This is a sting because the library is owned by us. Yes, and that is, and this is a private property. So I to help them to get that money. Yep. I mean, the restoration commission has gone two years, or sorry, uh, recreation commission has gone for two years without their batting pages, yep. and we told them, you know, CPA eligible, just fill out the form. We've actually been talking about that more education of town entities. Okay. All right, let's not be a dead horse. Um, I think generally we'll, we will say we ab abstain. If you feel comfortable with that, we'll just abstain from. Yeah, I both. think it's very helpful. It's okay. a very helpful discussion. All right. All right, Brian. What what's next? I'm gonna make a motion to. Approve the one articles they just reviewed. Make a motion that we I recommend. Motion we accept the one article. Yes, we have gone through and read them. But not the CPA articles, correct? But not the CPA. Correct. Right. Not right. Article 22. Right. Article 22, we will abstain. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, let's take a vote. Donna? Aye. Dan? Aye. Jim? Aye. All I okay. How about a special town meeting? <clears throat> let's let's take a look at that while we're here. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Okay. Special town meeting, May 2nd, 2023. There are four articles. Okay. Let's take each one individually. Um Donna, you start with. Article one. You want to read them? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $4,232.73 from available funds 
to pay unpaid bills of a prior fiscal year from Morton Salt Inc. or Road Salt. Any questions? Any issues? Are we good in this, Brian? That's the number? Yeah. Okay. Make a motion. Uh, just so moved. Motion. So moved. Okay. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Donna? I think we're, we're all here now. We don't have to. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's that's Brent right. Is not in Brent, the, Brent, Brent, Brent is Brent is not here, so we can we can just Brent. raise our hands. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Dan, Article Two. Article Two. Of see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of ninety nine dollars and thirty four cents from available funds to pay unpaid bills of a prior fiscal year to W. B. Mason Company Incorporated. For office supplies or take any other action relative there to. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Jim? Article, Article three. three. To see if the town will vote to repurpose $20,000 of unexpended funds appropriated under Article 15 of the April 28, 2015 annual town meeting. In Article 17 of the April 26, 2016 annual town meeting to include fiscal year 2023 operating expenses of the water department. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Article 4. See if the town vote to authorize the select board to enter into a contract for services with duration in excess of three years. Pursuant to prov provisions of general law, chapter 30B, section 12B, for the operation and maintenance of the solar, solar voltaic system at the town offices, or take any other action relative thereto. Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm good. Brian, you good? All right. Um, okay. I would like to recommend that we um, we discuss the letter from Lynn um, at the next meeting where we have a more complete board. Tommy will be here. Brenda will probably be here. And that way there, um, I think would be more effective all the way around. Um, also for the next meeting, um, I'd like for us to discuss, so you can think, think about it a little bit, a more effective way to, for the, um, the finance committee to recommend um, salary increases here in town. Um, I think it would be a good discussion to have, and um, I have some ideas, you probably do as well, um, so we can do it at that time. Brian, any, anything else? I would love that, because the process isn't great, so. Yeah, no, the process is, you know, is less than ideal. So the great if we could have something more right. set and forward looking and we don't have to have these discussions. It feels like each year it's just it we're just right. It's getting picking old. at old wounds every That's year. The, and all it's, we do. That's it's, all we do. And um there has to be a better way of uh, doing it the way we do it. So okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? So, second. Second. All right. We're all done.